Vangeline. Vangeline. Yeah? Are you nearly ready? Maybe. Well, we haven't got a lot of time. Need to get ready. Okay. Okay, hurry up. Angeline. Yeah? It's me again. Are you nearly ready? Uh, just give me five minutes. Five minutes? Yeah, five minutes. Well, no longer then. Five minutes, okay. okay yes, fine. Five minutes. Okay. Hurry up. Okay. I'm getting fed up waiting. Okay. Angeline? Yeah? Are you coming? Yeah, I said it would be five minutes. Five minutes? Yes, five minutes. Well, that was two hours ago. Was it? It certainly was. Oh. Now, can you come on? I'll be waiting downstairs. I'm not coming up again. Okay. All right? I'll be, yeah, I'll be there in a minute. Well, make sure you do. Okay. Please. Okay. Case. Why have you got a suitcase? <sighs> you said be ready. What? Yeah. Yeah, so I've got everything I might need, you know. I've got all my pairs of Converse, you know, my pink platform ones, my blue platform ones, my sparkly ones, just the everyday ones, you know. Um, I've got all my makeup palettes, you know, just the essentials, so I thought all of them i've got all my different pairs of trousers my you know patterned ones and my t-shirts got a swimming costume you know if you're going somewhere look, hot look, got my look, coat look, whoa, it's cold. whoa 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 i didn't need you to bring all that lot i just said could you get ready yeah be ready so i've got like everything i might need for like anything i didn't mean you to get every item of clothing out your wardrobe <laughs> that's not every item of clothing out of my yeah, wardrobe, that's, that's only one suitcase, and it, it couldn't possibly be. Anyway, all I meant was, we should look nice to do an introduction for this month's Messy Church. Just thought we could look nice. Right. So didn't need all that. Right. Just, just to look nice, do the introduction, tell all the nice people out there what the theme is for this month's Messy Church. That was it. Okay. 
Well yeah. then, yeah. what do you want us to wear to fit this theme then? Well, I just thought we'd look nice, so I thought that one. Oh, for me or you? I think for you. <laughs> oh, tiara. Because uh, I've got that. Oh, so, fancy. Yeah. So I thought that maybe, you know, we could uh, put these on and show people what, what the theme is. Okay. Do we get changed? Yeah, let's get changed. Whoa. There you, there that you works. go. Okay, and so we now want to introduce you to this month's theme for Messy Church, which is clothes. clothes. Okay, and we'll hand you over to Phil for this month's Messy Church. Let's go. Where are we going then in these outfits? Nowhere to go, is there? There's a lockdown. Oh, yeah. Well, thanks for that. What a brilliant start to another messy church. And from me, it's great to see you as well. Now, you know that uh, the subject is clothes. I don't know why the subject is clothes. I just felt God say to me, make the subject of the next messy church clothes. So let's see what happens and let's see uh, how we, we cover that. And we're going to do quite a few different things all connected. So the first thing we're going to do is have a bit of a bit of a game, kind of a quiz uh, about 10 items of clothing that I've got that belong to me. Some of them that I've worn, some of them that I wear. And I'm going to ask you a question about each one. OK, so you might need to guess. It doesn't matter. It's just a bit of fun. So I, you might want to go and get a piece of paper and a pen or you can do it in your head if you want to. And uh, let's just pause it now. OK, so are you all ready? Here's number one. Number one is this lovely pair of nice thick socks. Now, this is a what question. What do you think I do when I'm wearing those? What did I buy those for? Nice, thick, woolly socks. Number two, this is a who question. OK, who do you think? This is a, a, a really nice England polo shirt, some one that I really like. Who do you think bought me this as a present? Who bought me that as a present? Number three, this is a really lovely colourful tie. Okay, what occasion do you think I bought that tie for? What occasion do you think I bought that tie for? Number four. These aren't so good. How about those? Look at those. Look how dirty they are. The question is, what do you think I use those for? When do you think I would wear these jeans? Question five. This is a this is a, a what? Another Polo shirt. What game do you think I play when I'm wearing that? What game do you think I would be playing when I'm wearing that polo shirt? Number six. A bit smarter, this one. Okay. When do you think I wear a shirt like this? When do I wear a shirt like this? Question seven. This is a good question. This is two sides of this. This brilliant coat, the big tick on the back of it. Okay. I only wear that when I'm doing one thing. What do you think it might be? And secondly, how long do you think I've had that coat? So the first part of it is, I only do one thing when I'm wearing this. And the second thing is, how long do you think I've had it? 
Question eight. Now this is something, this is something smart, but it's still in its baggage. Let's have a look. It's a lovely suit. It's a why. Why do you think it's still in there and it's never been worn? Why is it still in there and never been worn? Question nine. I think you've probably been waiting for this one. Why, why do you think I bought that shirt? Why do you think I bought that shirt? And this is the last one, question 10. When do you think I wear this jumper? When do I wear that jumper? Okay, 10 questions all about uh, things that are clothes that I might wear or I have worn. I wonder if you got an answer to all of them. Uh, you can just think about it in your head and we'll look at the answers in a few minutes. Now, during this lockdown time, time, lots of people have done uh, baking and making things. And I've had a go at some things and um, I, I've made some biscuits and some cakes. And I think maybe we should have a Wes Bake Off because we asked Claire to make something for us and uh, she's gonna demonstrate shortbread. Now, I've made shortbread as well, so I think it's a bit of a bake-off. Wonder who's best, mine or Claire's? Let's go over to Claire. So today I thought we'd make some shortbread because it's a really nice, easy thing to make. It's great for if you just want a little treat, but also we've got Christmas planning coming up and it's always nice to have a little bit of shortbread at Christmas time. So your ingredients will be 300 grams of plain flour, 200 grams of butter or margarine, and 100 grams of caster sugar. Now, this is so easy. All you do is put everything in a big bowl. Perhaps start with the flour so that the butter doesn't stick to the bottom. And the sugar. And butter. And all you're going to do is get your hands in there and gently rub the butter into the flour and the sugar. It's really nice. And if it gets really sticky on your hands, just keep going because it will come off a bit easier once you get going. Right. right. If you break your butter into smaller pieces first, it's much easier to rub in. And it does feel quite nice. Lots of little bits, and then gently using tips of your fingers, just rub it into the flour. And it doesn't take too long, really. Very easy. But just don't be too rough with it. If you're too rough with it, your shortbread will be a little bit chewy, and you want it quite nice and light if possible. Just keep going, and if you lift it up a little bit, let some air in, that's nice. So keep going. Now when I've done today, I'm gonna to make it into a single round, but you can either chill it for a little bit, roll it out and cut out the shapes you like. You can roll it into a rectangle and cut out some fingers pretty much do what you like with it. I know some people at the Wes like house shaped biscuits so you could even do that too. So when it gets a little bit crumbly that's when you can start to press it together. Just squeeze it not too hard just a little until it starts to make a ball. I 
because I like mine in a big round that you can section off into pieces. I don't need to worry too much about getting it all together. I've got here a baking sheet with some greaseproof paper on. And all I'm going to do is tip it into the middle. And just gently squish it into the shape I want. Like I said, I like it a nice round shape. Then I can use a knife to make it into wedges. And when it's cooked, it just breaks apart really nicely. I like that. A nice cup of tea. Or if you're feeling like you really want to do something nice when it's cooked, you can dunk it in some melted chocolate and then leave it to set. Right. If you do shortbread in a bigger piece like this, it's going to take longer to cook. If you cut it out into shapes, you'll need to check after about 10 minutes to see if it is cooked. So here is my round. Oops. Get rid of those crumbs into the bowl. There we go. This is quite a big lot of mix. So get quite a lot out of it. Just get my big knife. And I'm being very careful because I've got the sharp end up. I'm just going to go through the middle like that. Handle got in the way there. Like this. Just to make the indents where it should just break apart then when it's cooked. And these are quite big shortbread pieces. But it's fine. It's all good. And then you're going to get a fork and just make some little holes all the way along. It just helped help it to cook a bit, a bit better. You don't have to do that if you're rolling it out and cutting out shapes. Okay. So that will then go into the oven at about 180 degrees C. If you're doing a big one, I'd say you're going to probably need 20 to 25 minutes. And check, and if it's a lovely golden brown, pull it out. Okay, this is going into the oven. So here it is. It actually took 30 minutes in the oven, but it's nice and golden around the edges and just nicely done in the middle. Um, hope you enjoy. Well, thank you, Claire. Uh, I've had a discussion with myself and I've decided yours was the best. So I hope that some people will have a go at making some of that shortbread. And um, as Claire said, make some for Christmas, maybe even give some away. So let's have a look now then at the answers to uh, that little game that we played earlier. So question one was about these nice uh, thick socks. What do I do when I'm wearing them? They are my walking socks. So when I put my walking boots on and go out walking, uh, that's when I use these nice thick socks. Number two was about this uh, polo shirt, this England polo shirt. And uh, Martin bought me that as a present. And uh, so it's either Martin or if you, uh, if you don't know his name, it's my son bought me that England polo shirt. Number three. This tie, what occasion did I buy that for? Well, it was my sister's wedding. Um, so that was uh, a tie I bought for my sister's wedding. Number four, those trousers. What do I wear those for? Well, it might have been put off a bit by the white paint on them, but this, the reason what I use those for is when I'm doing the gardening. And uh, I try to show you the, the dirty knees on them when I'm doing the gardening. The next one, <coughs> sorry, the next one was when do I wear this polo shirt? And the answer is when I'm playing golf. 
that's her golf shirt and so I often wear that when I play golf although I've I don't know if I've even played once this year number six was about this one a bit smarter this is my called a clerical shirt and I I tend to do you wear this if I if I do a funeral or sometimes if I go hospital visiting or just a few other occasions um, so that's uh, when I wear that number seven was this one this lovely coat and the answer to that is when do I wear that I only wear that when I go to a football game <laughs> it's my kind of my football coat and the bonus one was how old is it well I've got a photo and I was wearing it 18 years ago now it's not it's a really old coat so I don't wear it that often it's just my my football coat number eight was this one about the suit okay this nice suit and the question was why is it still in its bag well the answer is because it was the suit that I got for my son's wedding Tim's wedding that has well the wedding happened but I never got to wear it because we just had a really half an hour notice quick wedding and uh, I'm looking forward to wearing it when we have the big party whenever that might be number nine this is uh, you might have guessed one of my favorite ones why would I wear why would I uh, why did I buy this because it's my uh, favourite football team shirt. Now it's a green one and you might guess Notts County playing black and white stripes but this is last season's away kit. You have to be a proper supporter to buy the away shirt. So uh, there we go. I wear that because it's my favourite football team. And the last one was this one and I'm sure you managed to guess that one. My Christmas jumper. Okay, I usually wear that for the first time. First time I usually wear a Christmas jumper is the day that they switch the Christmas lights on in Rushton. That's not going to happen this year and so I'm going to have to find a different time. But all those you see are clothes that weren't that are mine. Some of them that I've worn before, some of them that I haven't yet worn and some of them that I do still wear. Now all of them have a significance for a different reason, don't they? Uh, you know, I wouldn't wear my suit to do the gardening, would I? And uh, can you imagine um, wearing this if I was doing something really serious like a funeral, unless it was a Notts County supporter, and that's, even that's doubtful. You see, we have clothes for the right reason. All of them have a significance for different reasons. And all of them have a use. You see, you wouldn't use a, a suit to do the gardening and neither would I wear that at my sister's wedding. Well, certainly not my, uh, my brother-in-law certainly wouldn't want that because he's a forest supporter. But there we go. But we wouldn't do that, would we? We wouldn't uh, wear them at the wrong occasion. We have clothes for different occasions. Now, there are clothes in the Bible that have a real significance, a real significance. And uh, through the Bible, there are lots and lots of mentions of clothes. And I was amazed to find that right through the Bible, right from the beginning to the end, there are lots of uh, mentions of clothes. And what we're going to do today, we're going to look at the first clothes in the Bible and the last clothes in the Bible. How about that? The first and the last. So the first are right here, right at the very beginning in the book of Genesis. And Genesis is the beginning. Let me quickly tell you the this, this story. Adam and Eve, uh, the Bible tells us, were the first people and they lived in the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden was a fantastic place. Everything was perfect, literally. There was no wrong, there was no evil, there was no sin there. Now, wouldn't that be an amazing place to live? But that's where they lived. But Eve, you might know this story, was tempted by the devil. And God had said, you can eat fruit from any of the trees in the garden, except the one that's in the middle of the garden. If you touch that, you will die. But the problem was that the fruit looked really, really nice. The fruit looked lovely. And so Eve took some of it and she ate it and she gave some to her, her husband, Adam, and he did the same. Now, the thing was that God knew that if they ate of that tree, they would know what was 
the difference between right and wrong and would get wisdom. And God was not happy at what they'd done. And they knew straight away that they had done wrong. And the first thing that they seemed to realise is that they needed some clothes. They didn't have clothes. They didn't need them. But now they do. You see, having no clothes, being naked was a sign of shame before God. And so what they did is they made their own clothes. And uh, the Bible says that they got fig leaves. Now, you perhaps see pictures of Adam and Eve and they got fig leaves. Um, I haven't got any real ones, but this is about the size that they were. And it said that they sewed them together. And I was trying to think how would you do that? I suppose you could try and do that and try and uh, sew them together. But the thing was, you see, they made their own. They decided to make their own clothes. But God said because they'd eaten of that tree, things were going to be difficult for ladies. It was going to be really painful having children for, for others, for the men. He said it was going to be hard work uh, to to uh, to plough the fields and things and, and to get what they needed. And of course, that was at, at that time when the men did all that kind of work. But working for food would be really, really hard. But God did something for them. You see, he looked at their clothes and he knew that they weren't good enough. They would never be enough. That if you think about it, if there were leaves, they'd dry up, wouldn't they? And they'd have to keep replacing them again and again and again. So what we discover is that God made them some clothes to cover them up. And he made them from an animal skin. But that beautiful garden, God said that they got to leave. They could never eat from what was called the tree of life. Because if they could, they could have lived forever. But they lost that because of what they did in the garden. And so they had to go out of the garden. They couldn't go back to that tree. But God had given them clothes made from animal skins. So you see they'd had two sets of clothes. They'd had ones made out of fig leaves that they'd made for themselves. And they'd made, had the ones made out of animal skin that God had made for them. But the important thing is this, that when they had those animal skin clothes, an animal had had to die. An animal had had to die for the skin to be made into clothes. So there they are, out of the garden, but wearing clothes that God made. Now, do you ever start a book and not finish it? Start a book and you get part way through it and it gets hard going. And you think, I can't see this going anywhere. Well, the thing is, if you do that, you might miss a fantastic ending. I have personally done it loads of times with books. I've got part way into it and read a few pages, maybe a few chapters, and then that's as far as it goes. But you might miss a fantastic ending. And I tell you this, that's what will happen if you do that with a Bible. I'm not saying that you have to read it right through from front to back. That is quite difficult to do. But to, to read all of it at different times. And the thing is, you need to go right to the very last page now to find the last clothes that are mentioned. If you don't look there, you'll miss a fantastic ending. Because the whole Bible is all about how God makes it possible for us not to be locked out, but to be able to eat from the tree of life. Not literally, but to be able to live forever. That's what all the Bible's heading for. And on the very last page, we find some more clothes. Listen to this as I read this uh, little bit to you. It says this, blessed or happy, really deeply happy, are those who wash their ropes that they may have the right to the tree of life. Remember before they couldn't go to the tree of life. Now God says they can go to the tree of life and they may go through the gate into the city. They were thrown out of the garden before, but now they can go into the eternal city and be with God forever. Wow. Wash their robes. That book of Revelation right at the end talks a lot about having white robes. Christians having white robes. You see, from beginning to end, God provides. 
Right at the very beginning, he made them clothes out of animal skin. Right at the very end, he makes it possible that their clothes can be washed white, as white as snow, spotless. And the reason that they could be washed spotless was because Jesus died. Because Jesus died, it meant we could be back with God. That is an amazing, fantastic thing. But God made it possible. Can you see what happened? Right at the very beginning, an animal had to die so that they could have animal skin clothes. Right at the very end, Jesus dies so that they can have white robes. The question is, are we trusting in ourselves? Are you trusting in yourself? Are you trusting in kind of homemade things, things that you've decided will make you good enough for God? Or are you trusting in God? Trusting in the, the spotless robes that he will allow you to have. And, and then he'll say, come into my kingdom and live with me forever. You see, there's one final thing. Suppose you desperately needed some new clothes and I know where to get them. I wouldn't be very uh, a very good friend if I said, I know, but I'm not going to tell you. You'd want to know. You'd say, please tell me. Well, I need to tell you, how do you get these white robes? How do you get those robes washed clean that the Bible talks about so that you can go back through the gate into the eternal city of God and live to be with him forever? You need to ask God to forgive you for all the wrong things that you've done in this life and to trust him that when Jesus died, it was so that all the things that you've done wrong could be forgiven and tell him that from now on you are going to live for him. The Bible calls it repentance. It means turning away from all our wrong things and turning to God. Why not do that now? Why not accept those lovely white robes that God offers? It's a great time to do it. Well, that was quite a lot of stuff there, uh, a lot for you to think about. But uh, we're going to go over now to Anne's craft room uh, because Anne's going to do something, uh, make something that you can follow. Uh, maybe you'd like to make this later. So I'm going to hand over to Anne. Thank you, Phil, for that. Now, I'm sure that we don't all have garments of white hanging in our wardrobes. But what we do have are some lovely clothes that you enjoy wearing no matter what the weather is like. So today we're going to do a seasons picture showing our favourite clothes we like to wear. So you need a sheet of A4 paper and you're going to fold that into quarters and crease it. Like so. Some felt pens, a ruler or a straight edge and something round to draw around. So this is my picture I did earlier. I've drawn the circle in the middle and then the four quarters, splitting it up by drawing the lines along the creases. And then in the middle we must thank God for our lovely clothes. So I put thank you God for our lovely clothes because I'm sure that we all have lovely clothes and we're very fortunate to be able to have them. And then in each of the segments I've put autumn, winter, spring and summer and drawing us in there with our, some of the clothes that we like to wear. So have fun, enjoy and we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Well, thank you for that. We're going to, we've almost finished now. We're going to finish with a song. So we're going to put the song on. The words will be on the screen. You can sing along if you know it. You can clap along or you could just enjoy.
Well, thank you to everybody who's played any part today in getting this uh, messy church onto the video. Whether it's people who've played music, whether it's people who've done sketches, cooking, craft, um, putting the actual video together and editing it all. Really grateful to you. Really grateful as well that you've uh, been able to watch this today. And I hope that you just spent a bit of time during this lockdown and that you'll think very carefully about what I, I, I talked about today, about those clothes. Right at the beginning of the Bible, they had to leave the garden, but God had, God had made them some clothes to wear. Right at the very end, they can go back through the gate into the eternal city, wearing the white robes that God makes possible. Wow, what a story the Bible is. But you know, it's not just made up, it's the truth. Well, Look out for our next messy church. But before we uh, finish, I'm going to, to pray. So would you like to, to pray with me? Dear Father God, we thank you so much uh, that we can share messy church today. We thank you that we've been able to look at clothes. And we thank you for all the clothes that we've got. The, the ones that keep us warm and the ones that keep us nice and cool in the summer. Uh, Lord, different colours maybe, different fibres. Oh, Lord, we are, we are so blessed with so many things. But thank you for the clothes that you make available for us. Those lovely white robes washed, clean, spotless, so that we can be back with you and have a relationship with you. 
Lord, we ask you to be with us. Help us during these next few days. Uh, we think about this terrible time of COVID-19 and all the things that are happening, people losing their lives. But Lord, we pray that they'll be able to find a vaccine. We pray that soon this will be brought to an end. And Lord, we look forward to when we can really share Messy Church together again. But until that time may be, however long it is, we pray that you'll be with us now and as we do more videos if we need to. Lord, just be with us and bless us, we pray. Amen. So thank you for joining us. Stay safe. Remember the rules. Hands. Keep washing your hands. Face. Wear a mask. Space. Keep your distance. Stay safe. And may God bless you.